So why am I watching this video? Because you, my dear friend, are planning on uploading a fantastic low summary to the Collaborative Library. Am I? Before you dive into this, it's really important to double check whether you've got the right copyright permissions to summarise the ePrint in the first place. So uh, how, would I, how would I work that out? Yeah, good question. Watch our short video if you can on what permissions I need to upload my lace summary and using copyright and royalty free images, music and other media in my lay content. Yep, so it looks like I'm good to go with that. So, like what now? Well, don't forget, it's your summary and your content your way. But why not keep in mind the following hacks to supercharge your work? And there are five crucially important areas to keep in mind. Idea development, structure, language, reflection and feedback, and last but not least, creating a referencing and acknowledgement. Hit me! Yeah, so develop your initial ideas, get to know your non-specialist audience, think about who you're pitching to and what they need to hear because it needs to interest them, ultimately. Mm, okay, yeah. Um, can you give me an example? Sure. People with health conditions really are interested in how scientific research could lead to preventative measures, treatments, or new diagnostic techniques. So frame your work in this context. Gotcha. Pitch your summary at the same level as an article in maybe like a tabloid newspaper, but importantly, without the spin and overly sensational language. Nobody wants that. Try to balance breadth with depth. Believe it or not, non-professional audiences won't care at all about the specific type of microscope you've used. Sorry. Are you still with me, Anthony? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, of course, yeah, sure. Good, I'm glad. Co-create your lay summary with service users and other key stakeholders relevant to the problem or field you're in. This is much more collaborative, by the way, and should help you think of ideas that are really excellent about how you pitch it to them in an accessible way. Cool, cool. To get you on the road, Start with a blank sheet of paper and write something completely new. Although you'll be drawing information from that e-print that you've got right there, don't copy and paste from the original abstract, whatever you do. Describing things in your own words will really help to improve your own understanding and deepen your learning anyway. Right, right, so like keep it simple but relevant. Yep. Follow a sound structure though. Audio summary in a way that makes sense logically to a layperson or the public. So not necessarily the same order as the original e-print. For example, only introduce ideas when required and try to avoid introducing lots of new ideas later on. So how long have I got words wise? I mean, admittedly I can be a bit wordy. Yeah, and you, my studious friend, will need to keep it short and sweet. Otherwise you're gonna lose your audience completely and you don't want that, right? So we're talking 500 to 800 words, give or take. And in spoken form, you can guess that this is roughly equivalent to about a six to eight minute YouTube video. If you're stuck for ways to try and reduce the length of it because say uh, describing your treatment might have quite, it might be quite involved or, um, you know, just generally lengthy, why not nod to or link to your summary to other lay summaries uploaded on the Collaborative Library? So check out our video on uploading a lay summary to see the, uh, the panel here, just to see how you include related links. Failing that, you can always link out to other publicly accessible websites in your summary. Just ensure, though, wait for it, that they're a reliable source. Sounds good. It's all about making links, right? Was that pun intended? <laughs> did, did you like it? Yeah? You like it? Loved it. If 
you do a video though, or audio lay summary, just maybe start by briefly saying who you are and what organisation you're affiliated with. If you want to include your organisation's logo, yeah, go for it. But if you're summarising your own or others' work, just briefly introduce the researchers of the research group. Simple as that. Hmm. So something like... While studying for his doctorate at the University of Zurich in 1905, Albert Einstein did a groundbreaking study exploring the theory of relativity. Yeah, yeah, fine. Maybe just think about how it's, you know, kind of the tone that makes the music, right? Be creative with your headline or title. Pick a short, snappy, reader for any statement or question to really grab your audience's attention. This needs to be relevant, it needs to be impactful, factually accurate, and encourages them to read, watch, or listen on, okay? You could, if you wanted to, use comparisons, metaphor, I love a good metaphor, personally, analogies, quotes, or play on wording. Just like earlier, actually, quite like that. All are great vehicles to convey your work in a way that makes sense to other people, and that's the bottom line, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> so you give me a free rein here to give. Really creative. I am indeed, sir. Identify an aspect of your research, or others, that almost anyone can relate to, and use that to really connect with your audience. So try to appeal to their pain points, yeah, we all know what they are, or feelings on a topic, so be it frustration, powerlessness, or sadness about climate change, right? Because that's topical. This can be really effective. Oh. I love, I love David Attenborough. Yeah, I know, right? What's not to love about him? Try to use powerful images though. Illustrations or video, preferably. Your title should ideally be followed by an intuitive and catchy Creative Commons CC1 BY or BYSA royalty-free image. Uncomplicated diagrams or other graphics that illustrates the topic of the article. And if you're unsure about that, just see our video for more about creating a supercharged infographic. All images should be captioned and credited appropriately. Just better still, you know, make your own. How's this? I was going for more of a kind of a Kandinsky, conceptual, you know. What do you think? Nice. Um, you might want to blend that a bit or something. Um, well, anyway, coming back to what I was saying, include a one sentence top line in either a text or spoken format in your video or audio that summarises what is, after all, so novel about the research and its findings. I always thought the merit of originality is not novelty, it's sincerity. Could be. Look at you and your fancy scholarly quotes. Mm. So in the main body, just place the research in a context that gives a clear narrative. Take the audience by the hand and tell them a story. Just set the scene really carefully. Provide answers to essential questions. What, why, where, when and how. Paint a picture for your audience. Maybe a different one to the one you just sort of did, if you don't mind. Using concrete everyday examples. So you don't need to include all the context of your research, that's not necessary. Just add a sentence or two that the reader absolutely needs to understand to get yours or others' work. There's such a thing as information overload, and if it's an e-print of a study protocol, then tell them about what you're hoping to find out. Yep, so more is less, as they say. Exactly! Give your audience a reason to care about it, right? You know, address the so what question. So what? So what? Describe the specific problem that yours or others' research is trying to solve. What gap does it fill? What are you and they hoping to achieve? And how will it help people, even if a breakthrough isn't likely in their lifetime? Because sometimes it isn't, right? Whose lives have the potential to improve? And for instance, you know, how many service users or members of the public are affected and what are the costs to services? Just share the relevance to this and the potential benefits. And that's it, you're good to go. All right, okay, so like the real life applicability stuff then, yeah? Yep. Every sentence should make one point simply, concisely and directly, making the journey from A to B short and easy. 
Don't put unnecessary strain on your audience by making them have an incredible headache from trying to remember things from one part of the text or the audio of the video to the other. As with your scientific writing, ensure that your statements though are backed up by evidence. So any claims you're making need to be backed up. But don't feel that you need to reference or evidence things in quite the same way as you would do in published research or your essays. So something like the late professor Stephen Hawking from Cambridge University showed that black holes emit radiation. Great film that, yeah. So say how the research was carried out. It was in cells in a dish, in animals or people. And if you used animal studies, just say you did, be honest. Just so the reader has some context around how relevant it is to them. And if relevant, briefly describe your human participants as clearly as you can. Also, you could share if and how service users or the public have been involved in developing this research to date, or how they'll be involved in the future, if you happen to know. Mm, some nice options there then. Great. Oh yeah, we like options. Nice and flexible here at the Collaborative Library, so no worries about that. Just make sure that you do describe the outcomes though, including risks and adverse events. So. Maybe using simple risk communication images, metaphors, you know, I mentioned those earlier, got a preference for those, but also the benefits and real life impact or bigger picture at the end. Tell your audience, you know, what potentially should happen next in terms of future work. Right, so <clears throat> the study that I want to summarise has a few problems with it. Can I talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Every research study, and it, well, Every e-print has its flaws. Acknowledge any key biases and limitations in simple terms. It's really important to share the dilemma, if you know what I mean, with your audience about the choices you or authors have made. As a requirement for your submission, you may need to sort of have a section below your lay summary to share in more detail the methodological limitations of yours or others' study in a brief quality assessment checklist that we've reworded for a kind of a lay audience. Check here for more details. Yep. What's your language, young man? Well, I mean, use clear, short sentences, 15 to 20 words or less, and avoid complex grammatical structures. Nobody likes those. You could include bullet points or headings to break up your text or spoken words in your video if it's helpful. If it's written, maybe leave some white space. Use short paragraphs with at least one line space in between and avoid really ultra long paragraphs because they are exhausting. Don't use a word that's long where you just don't need one. You know, a short one can work. So for example, endeavor, try, facilitate, help. Consequently, so. Advantageous, helpful. Why not use free reading label software to carefully pitch for year nine students in the UK schooling system? So I've got a few long words that I want to sort of use that I think make me sound a little bit more intelligent. Don't do it! I mean, minimise use of jargon, scientific and technical terms, phrases and acronyms or abbreviations, and instead just use everyday plain language, come on. If it's unavoidable, then just provide clear explanations. What do you mean when you said that you use mass spectrometry? Check out our growing glossary of scientific terms here made simple to captivate your audience with words. Okay, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it. So no sort of Charles Dickens style or as some would say Dickensian wordiness. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Try to instead adopt a more conversational style, you know, like an entertaining tone. Balance detailed scientific explanation without oversimplifying the content too. So not too formal, but not too colloquial, do you know what I mean? Imagine you're trying to explain it to your nan. Use active and positive phrases and sentences rather than formal or passive sentence construction. So here's an example, say, we will do X rather than X will be done by us. The active voice, I or you, and second person, you, should be used in place of a third person, he or she. For example, people were given steroid treatment rather than steroid treatment was given to people. Or we looked at how cells change rather than how cells change were looked at. You get me? 
So if it's my research then, how do I talk about myself? Well, yeah, if it's your original e-print, you know, it's your work, then speak in the first person about it, you know? I or we looked at. That's fine. Cut out any words that you don't need, okay? And I'm just gonna stick up a slide for you now that will just explain that. Don't turn those verbs into nouns, right? For example, she made new medications preventing COVID-19, where preventing is a verb or a doing word. Instead of COVID-19 prevention, prevention equals kind of a concrete word in that situation. Just thinking about it, I don't want to offend anyone, actually, um, you know, with the things that I have to say. Have you got any sort of sound advice about that one? Yeah, 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 I totally hear you. Just ensure then that you use layperson-centered language rather than focusing on circumstance, illness or disability. Talk about the person or the group of people. For example, people with a condition is preferable to the disabled. Or a person has multiple sclerosis rather than is a victim of multiple sclerosis. Refer to clinical problems where possible as a condition rather than a disease, okay? That's pretty outdated, that sort of stuff. Keep in mind that people reading your summary may have the condition that you're talking about. So, you know, just consider how your words will affect them. For instance, avoid words such as abnormal, right? That's pretty old school. And instead talk about difference and diversity. That's all the rage and it's important. And refer to people as volunteers or participants rather than subjects. Hmm, that is sound advice, thanks. Mm hmm. If your summary is written or spoken, well, grammar and punctuation need to be accurate, by the way, you know, so spelling should follow appropriate conventions. Coming back to that earlier point about reflection and feedback, make sure that you read aloud or, where relevant, rewatch or re listen to, if it's a video, which we love, your lay summary in a few, you know, maybe on a few sittings before uploading it, just to make sure that you've got it just right. Oh no, ah, oh, I hate listening to the sound of my own voice. <laughs> oh really? Okay, yeah, well, pe um, people tell me I don't seem to have that problem. I don't know if that's a good thing necessarily, but perhaps find someone then who, you know, who is not in your field to read over, watch or listen to your draft day summary, and that's probably a good solution. Get feedback from colleagues, supervisors, and at least one non-specialist in your field, which could be your vetting professional thinking of it. Better still, ask lay members or expert service users from your research team to review your lay summary and provide invaluable feedback, because usually it is. Then just adjust it where necessary and boom, you're good to go. So I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like I go a bit word blind, you know, when writing these kinds of things, you know, it's just, hopefully it'll, it'll be good enough, hopefully. Well, yeah, and this is why you should put your lay summary to one side, maybe for a few days, you know, and review it later with fresh eyes and ears. How does it sound now? Are you happy for the public to cast their eyes on it and make comment? And remember, if you're not yet qualified as a researcher or another professional group listed, maybe you're a student or a research or clinical assistant, then you'll be able to upload your lay summary, but the public won't see it until it's been vetted by a qualified professional within your organisation. Credit, reference and acknowledge. Give clear details of the ePrint web link in the upload form that your lay summary draws information from and if published, reference with the full digital object identifier, DOI, in the lay summary upload form. Don't forget to credit properly with Creative Commons material and if you're not sure about that, see the link here. Acknowledge contributors and funders either in your summary if words are too few, usually they are, or on the upload form appearing below the content that you create. Okay, yep, yeah, I'm totally up for it. Any last suggestions? Share with the world. Share and share alike. To optimise your reach, check our video on sharing your amazing work to get the best reception and the greatest impact. Videos are probably the best way to reach your audience. Therefore, we've put together some videos to help with this, including 
went for it. Making a five star rated lace summary video, shooting tips on a shoestring. Or there's the other one about top 10 tips to make your lace summary five star rated and go viral. Is it like a bit tricky to upload a lace summary then? Did you say that I need to do a quality assessment checklist as well? Mm, not at all. For further information though about uploading a lay summary and that process and completing a quality checklist to help your audience, check out this video here, uploading your lay summary in five easy steps. So you're all set. It's time to communicate your lay summary with the world and share yours and others' research widely. Good luck.